Let me say a word or two before I get into my message. Uh, first, those of you who are familiar with hearing aids, both of mine went out at the same time, so I cannot hear you. I announce sometimes that I can read lips, and when I do that, people usually, you know, cover up like that. Uh, but I cannot read them well that well. So if you say something to me even after church and I don't respond to you in a proper way, just know that I did not hear you. Uh, I appreciate Roger asking me to fill in for him today. And I want you to know I am in no way attempting to compete with his preaching uh, because he is a very competent preacher and a very effective minister and I appreciate it and we are we're fortunate to have him at our church. Uh, I do ask for your prayers as I try to fill in and try to bring a message from God's holy word. And if I move things around once in a while, it's just trying, I've tried for about a month here on trying to see what I could do because after so many years, 61 years, you try not to do the same thing and you have to come up with something new. I did a little figuring and the doctors told me when I had that major problem, if you remember, that I'd have trouble with figures, and I do. But I did a little bit of figuring, and I found out in 15 more days, I will be 85 years old. That kind of scares me a little. Uh, that means that now I am 84 years old plus 350 days. Uh, and a total of 31,010 days. Wow. And 744,240 hours. <laughs> and 44,212,420 minutes. I may be off 100 minutes or 1,000. <laughs> but 2 trillion six hundred and fifty two million seven hundred and forty five thousand two hundred seconds and on top of that I have 22 more days because in my 85 years there's been 22 29s of February so that means to say 22 more days that's 528 more hours 31,680 more minutes and 1,900,800 more seconds. Now, I had that written down. I didn't just figure that out. <laughs> but the great thing about it is, God gave me every second. Every minute. And every day. And when you look at your bulletin, I don't know whose picture that is in there, but I thought it might be Katie's. You tell her I said that. Uh, if you look at your bulletin, it was in the scripture. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. February, uh, January 22, 2017 is a day that God has given all of us. So we'll, we will rejoice uh, and be glad in it. The idea for my message came to me. Roger and I, and I think some other people from the church had attended a a memorial service for Taffy Casey. And we got home and I was watching television. I do not pay much attention to commercials, but I happened to catch this one and it said the very words, which is the title of my sermon for today, that tomorrow is not a given. Now it was advertising some kind of medicine you had to have to live. <laughs> but, but that was what it was. Tomorrow is not a given. And really, none of us are promised a tomorrow. And I realize this more and more and more and more as I'm 84 plus. But that applies to the young, the middle aged, and all of us. And scripture backs this up. Uh, we've already heard. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what tomorrow may bring forth. And the Living Bible puts it like this. Don't brag about your plans for tomorrow. Just wait and see what happens. 
Please hear the following scriptures, and they are a repeat of what we have already heard part of them are, and they're portions of scriptures. And I want you to think of them like a, a, a column of figures and add them up in your mind. So listen to them. And these are coming from the sixth chapter of Matthew. 614. Your heavenly Father will forgive you if you forgive those who sin against you. 615. But if you refuse to forgive them, he will not forgive you. 619. Do not store up treasures here on earth where they can erode and waste away or be stolen. 620. Store them in heaven where they will never lose their value. 624. You cannot serve two masters. 625. Do not worry about things like food, drink, clothes, and so forth. 626. Consider the birds of the air. They do not sow nor reap. God feeds them. You are of much more value. Now in your mind, just draw a line. And here is the summation. And 634. Take therefore... No thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. I used to have trouble understanding that. I like the way the Living Bible puts that verse. It says, so don't be anxious about tomorrow. God will take care of your tomorrow. Live one day at a time. And I want to say to you, and I know most of you. In fact, I think I know every one of you. Whatever has happened in your life, whatever, whatever difficulty, whatever wrong, whatever sin, whatever good thing, whatever bad thing, whatever has happened in the past or whatever kind of situation you are in today, you can trust God, do the very best you can, turn the rest over to him, live one day at a time in that, in that faith. I like this idea uh, of living one day at a time. I remember my wife Anna used to sing this song, and she may have, uh, she may have sung it here. I don't remember that. But listen to some words. This is from, well, Chris Christopherson and Kerry John Wilkins wrote it. Listen to some of the words. Lord, for my sake, teach me to take one day at a time. One day at a time, sweet Jesus. That's all I'm asking of you. Just give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. Yesterday's gone. And tomorrow may never be mine. See, there it is. We don't know, do we? So for today, show me the way one day at a time. And that's how we have to take life. Now let me give you another column of figures. And these are from James 3 and 4. Now let's read portions of the scripture. But James 1, 3, 1 says, Do not be eager to tell others their fault. You ever do that? Hmm. James 3, 2 says, For we all make mistakes. How many would admit you make a mistake? I don't see a hand. Why don't you throw up both of them? <laughs> wow. Every day. Every day. Do not. We all make mistakes. James 3, 2b says, If anyone can control their tongue, it proves that they have control over themselves in every other way. Then in James 3, 8 through 12, and I'm paraphrasing this, it says, no human being can tame the tongue. It can pour out deadly poison. At times, it praises our Heavenly Father. And almost at the same time, it breaks out in curses against people made in the image of God. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but have you ever left church and got an argument? I won't ask. I won't. I've been there, so I know. James 3.10 says, People, this is not right. A spring does not spew forth fresh water and then bitter water. You cannot pick olives from a fig tree. 
you cannot draw fresh water from a salty pool. Now, draw a line again and hear the summation from Jesus in 4, 13 through 17. It says, listen people, you who say today and tomorrow we're going to such a town, stay a year or two, open up a business, how do you know what's going to happen tomorrow? That's from the Living Bible. 14 tells us, the length of your lives, and I want you to hear this, the length of our lives is as uncertain as a morning fog, a vapor, a mist. Now this is for you on this side. Just put it over. Watch this. Everybody looking? And including the preacher, it's on this side. That quick, wasn't it? The length of our lives is as uncertain as the morning fog. A vapor, a mist. Now you see it, it's gone instantaneously. It's gone. That's how life is. Verse 15, uh, verse 15 says, what we ought to say is, if the Lord wills, if he wants us to, we shall do this or that. Otherwise, you'll be bragging about what your plans are, and such self-confidence never pleases God. And then verse 16 says, 4.16, uh, that knowing what is right to do and doing it it is a sin. Ira Stanfield says it well for me in a song based on Matthew 10, 31 that says, Fear not, you are of more value than many sparrows. So listen to some of these words. I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from its sunshine for its skies may turn to gray. I don't worry over the future, for I know what Jesus said. And today I walk beside him, for he knows what is ahead. I don't know about tomorrow. It may bring me poverty. But the one who feeds the sparrow is the one who stands by me. And the path that is my portion may be through the flame or flood. But his presence goes before me, and I'm covered by his blood. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know, I know who holds tomorrow. And I know, I know, I know who holds my hand. That's my faith. I believe that with all my heart. And I know that you know I believe that. People who know me know that I do not use scare tactics trying to get people to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Uh, if I thought it would help, <laughs> I might, might try it. Uh, I did one time. I'll tell you about it uh, later. But uh, I, I just, I think sometimes that drives people uh, the other way. I am a realist and this I know. One day soon, I'm going to die. I'll uh, be 85 for long. My wife and I were sitting at the breakfast table yesterday morning, and we counted 15 about it from our church. About the same age I am. Some of you are a little bit younger, and some of you are a little bit older. But young or old, we may as well face the fact and admit it, as Hebrew 9.27 tells us, 
One day, we're going to die. And not to be morbid at all, but I want to read a list of names uh, of people who are, have been directly or indirectly connected to this church. And if you will, I know we've been standing a lot this morning, but out of respect to them, uh, would you stand for just a moment? Would you stand, please, as I read this list of names? Ozell Wilson, Mervyn Banks, Barbara Banks, James Bratcher, Jesse B. Goins, Glendon Daniels, Ruth Daniels, Glenn Daniels, Kenneth Schaefer, Dar Schaefer, L.A. Hill, Thelma Hill, Jen Lee Darnell, James Jacobs, Ruth Jacobs, Pete Peters, Frank Giannazza, Charles Brantley, Dean Crouch, Bobby Stepp, Max Stepp, Vera Stepp, Mo Breeding, Bob Cataldo, Wanda Lou Hannah, Anita Davis, Nisi Keel, Taffy Casey. And since I typed this up, I had to pencil this one in. Ophelia Tot, Florida. Would you be seated, please? Now, no doubt I've missed some. But this I know. My name, or your name, or your name, your name, your name, could have already been on that list. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just being realistic. Realistic. Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you may die. <laughs> That's in the Bible about two or three times. But I like the way it's in Second, First Corinthians, I believe it is, which reads like this. If we never live again after we die, then we might as well go and have ourselves a good time. Let us eat, drink, and be merry. What's the difference? For tomorrow we're going to die. That's from the Living Bible. Now let me be quick to add the rest of that story, like Paul Harvey would say. Verse 33 says, do not be fooled by those who say such things. If you listen to them, you will start acting like them. Get some sense and quit thinning. <laughs> I like how straightforward sometimes the living Bible puts it. Back what I was studying for, for what I preach on today, I flip through my Bible, I scratch it up, I write it up, I leave little notes in it. And I found a note in there, and I want to give you a quote uh, from that note. Uh, it's just, I'll give you one little paragraph. And I believe the date was February 12, 2012. Quote, today, some of you will remember this. Today we have Colin Prater, Hannah Qualls, and Alice Shelton who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. This decision was made at a youth retreat recently, and today we celebrate with them and give thanks to God for their decision, end quote. And also on that particular day, if I remember right, we had Abby Farrell, and Audrey Schaefer, 
who came and made a rededication of her life. And what a great and happy occasion that, that was. And I thought, wouldn't today be a great day for someone to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior? Not because Lewis Johnson preaching, but because it's a great opportunity to do that. All of these people that I've read and all these people that you could think of, I asked the question, is it right in my heart with God? And I thought about that little heart, that little girl, sweet little girl that <laughs> lit the candles. She came up and tore a little heart off and put it right there. There it is. <laughs> and I thought, isn't it great to be a part of what the preacher talked about, the fellowship? He also asked, Roger did last Sunday, if I remember, talking about John West's small, small groups. They got together and asked, how is it with your soul? And I ask you today, in closing, how is it with your soul? You, you, anyone here could cause rejoicing in heaven. Listen to Luke 15, 7. I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. And Luke 15, 10 says, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And I say to that, thank you, Jesus. Now, today, tomorrow is not a given. How do we do that? By trusting him. Only trust him, the song said. Only trust him. He will save you, it says it three times. He will save you. He will save you now. I have said what I have said. In the name of God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.